Okay, so a while ago I did a tutorial on this, a uh, very basic one, on using an OBD uh, connector, which is a connector that allows you to connect to the onboard computer in your car um, through USB using the command prompt. Now, these devices range from like $25 up to like $200. Mine, I think I paid $35 for. Uh, mine is an ELM327 uh, model, I believe. You can get it off Amazon, like I said, for around you know, $30, $35. Um, and there's plenty of software out there, including open source software written in Python uh, for connecting to your car and getting a bunch of information. But that's not why I bought it. I bought it because I want to be able to interact with it and manipulate it uh, manually from the command prompt. Otherwise, I would have just bought a cheapo handheld one that I don't have to hook to the computer. Um, that being said, I haven't messed with it much because I live in Florida and it's been the summer, it's been very hot, but my wife's uh, check engine light came on the other day, and so I thought I'd hop in the car now, it's kind of raining so it's nice and cool out somewhat, and I thought I'd play with it a little bit more. So this is a little bit of update, I haven't played with it since the first day I got it where I only played with it for a couple hours, um, but let's get uh, jump right into it. Uh, I'm going to use screen to connect through the USB serial device. Um, this isn't the only program uh, you can use. It may not even be the best, but it's something that's very commonly on systems and easy to use. Uh, to access the device, we need permission, so we're going to be sudo for this. And we're going to say sudo screen, and if it's not installed, it should be in your repositories. And then the device. And in my case, it's under uh, DEV uh, TTY USB 0. And you also have to give it the, I always have trouble with this word, baud rate. Um, and that may vary from device to device. It should be written on the back of your device. Mine is 38400. And I hit enter, and I am now connected to uh, the OBD device, which is plugged into my car. Now, my car is off, but I do have a power light, and so the, the um, uh, cable does get power. Um, actually, it might be powered from my USB cable now that I think about it. Um, but what I'm going to do here is, um, last time we typed in uh, 0101 to bring up an error code. But before we do that, um, in some cases, according to the documentation, like if you're in Windows and you're using HyperTerminal, which when I was a Windows user, I loved that program, um, to start up uh, a connection, you would have to type AT. Um, and if you want to reset the connection, ATZ is the command. And um, we're going to run that, and we'll see ATZ, and right there, you can see the first layer is cut off when I'm using screen by our command prompt, but it actually says ELM327 version 1.4. That is the version of my adapter here, and when you go to the website to get the documentation for decoding stuff, you want to make sure that you're getting the proper one for yours. For more on that, check out... Um, my first video, which hopefully I put a link in the description or even an annotation in this video. So that's, once again, ATZ and hit enter will reset your connection. And you should, uh, if you have a similar device to mine, uh, get the information on what version of the hardware you're running. Um, also, I want to mention from reading the documentation, it is not case sensitive. So you can do ATZ, all capital, and get the same thing. A, capital T, lowercase z, same thing. It's not case sensitive. Another thing, which I'll get to in a moment, but let me jump in here real quick. Last time we did 01 space 01 to get an error code. Watch what happens when I do that now. It says searching, where last time I got the error code like that. And then eventually it says unable to connect. Once again, the first layer is getting cut off by my command prompt there. And that's because uh, the power on the car is not on. So the engine doesn't have to be on, but the power does have to be on. So click the key, you know, the uh, two clicks to get it on without starting up the engine. And once again, we'll do 0101, zero, one, zero, one, and I will hit enter. And right there, we would get our error code right away. Now, I've already checked the error code that I was getting from the check engine light, and I reset it, but I'm going to go over this. So uh, 0007, I believe, is the default. Basically, everything's okay. Um, but what I also wanted to mention from reading the documentation, 01 space 01 is the same as 0101. It does, it's not case sensitive and ignores all tabs and spaces. That allows you to space things out how you make it uh, for you to be more easily readable, but the computer just ignores all white spaces. So tabs and spaces do not matter. So 01 space 01 and 0101 are the same command. So that's a little tip for you. 
that's white spaces and case is not important in this case where in a lot of cases it is um, so another thing is after you check the area code doing 0101 and looking it up online and in the documentation as I showed you in the previous tutorial once again check the description and any annotations for that video um, you find out the problem and you fix it. Like in my case of my wife's car, it was actually what we thought it was before I checked it. And it was basically uh, the error code for the gas cap on the car being loose. If you've never done that before, I've done it at least three times in my life. Where if you don't crank down the gas cap, you know when you get gas and you, you clank, crank it till it clicks a few times. If you don't do that, uh, basically the gases and pressure get out and the car check engine light will come on. And my wife said to me the other day, she doesn't think she locked it down. That turned out to be what it was. But this time, thanks to having this cable, I didn't have to go all the way someplace and get it checked. I was able to check it myself. And after checking it with 0101, looking at the center two numbers, as we did in the first tutorial, and uh, checking out the documentation on how to code those and then search them, uh, to clear it, once I found out that there's really no problem with the car, you just did 04, and that will clear any error codes, actually they're called trouble codes, uh, and clear any of the lights on that are on your dash that may be up. And I suppose if you do that and there is a problem, the light will come back on shortly after thereafter. Um, so that is another quick look at using the OBD uh, onboard computer cable, the ELM327 uh, version 1.4 is what I have. Once again, you can find that on Amazon. And um, you know, this is, once again, we're working very basic here. Hopefully in another uh, month or two, probably two months, the weather will start cooling down around here and I can actually get out in the car more without sweating a whole lot. And I hope to actually start checking things like, uh, yeah, I know you can check RPMs, probably your, um, your miles per hour, and basically uh, all the stuff that you see on your dash. And I hope to maybe eventually make a nice little GUI interface using Python. But first, we're going to be using just the terminal to understand, because before we move on to a GUI, we want to understand the basics from the command line. So once again, uh, if you have one of these devices, you know, this is a fun thing to do. You know, do using, interacting with it yourself without using software someone else wrote. Uh, if you don't have one of these, hey, you know, it's, it's not a bad investment if you want to get your hands dirty for $35 to get this same cable I've got. If not, you can get a little handheld one you don't hook to a computer for like $10, $15 and saves you a trip to the, uh, even like someplace like Advanced Auto, they'll check it for free for you, but, you know, for 10 bucks to have the device yourself, that's cool. But uh, it's a fun thing to play with, and uh, I hope to do a lot more fun stuff with it once uh, the weather cools down around here a little bit. So once again, I thank you for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. Um, That's Chris with a K. There's a link in the description. And um, I hope that you have a great day.